back in 2017, so uh, not too long ago, I found myself, you know, in my business, I'd grown up, you know, a multiple six figure coaching business with what I was running at the time, which was high level private coaching. And I had a year long program and there's nothing wrong with that model, by the way, it was fantastic. And I was really happy that um, I'd gotten to a point in my journey where I was starting to build my team. I just had a little mini mighty team and uh, there was just three of us. And, um, and what we did was once a year, my clients would all fly into Seattle. I live in the Seattle area and we do a two day event. So a, a workshop style event. And that was it as far as any in-person experiences. So I found myself about um, halfway through 2017 and I, I just took a moment. Do you ever feel like something's just not quite in full alignment with yourself? And you're just like, okay, I know I've been taking all these steps, but not, it's, like, it's not all in full alignment with myself. So I took a step back, looked at the big picture of my business, of my life, and I was like, what's missing for me right now? And what was missing, like there was a lot of things that were going right, but what was missing for me was having in-person experiences with my team and my community. So all that being said, I thought to myself, okay, well, if that's what's not working for me, then I get to shift because I don't wanna keep doing what I've been doing if I'm missing something that is so authentic to me and I know something that has made a massive difference for me as I've grown, which is being a part of a community. And I thought, why not shift some things up going into 2018 and really be in full alignment? So it was a little bit scary because I thought, now I'm used to doing what I've been doing, which has been working really well. So I was definitely in a, a bit of a comfort zone. And I love that quote where, um, I don't know who said it, but it's like, there's no growth in the comfort zone and there's no comfort in the growth zone, right? So I'm just like, okay, so it's my time for me to get uncomfortable. And so that's when I decided to launch both my retreats and my mastermind. So my powerhouse retreats, which are an incredibly like transformational experience, three days. It's all about deepening your messaging, how you deeply connect with your ideal clients, um, how to create conversational messaging and conversational offers. So you don't come across as salesy or marketingy. And, um, so those are my retreats. And then I also launched my powerhouse mastermind, uh, which was, I knew going to be a game changer for those who stepped in because it's my only ongoing group coaching and mentoring program and community. And I wanted to start with something that I was going to build upon versus having a year long program. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with year long programs. I think they're fantastic. I just took a step back and what was authentic to me was to build a community and build live event experiences so we could all come together and have those massive breakthroughs that really happen on a deeper level when we're in person. So with my retreats, we, we created that and produced that. And then with my mastermind, with my powerhouse mastermind, um, every four months or so, we do what we call a powerhouse live event where we all come in together for two days. And then um, if that wasn't enough in one year, I also decided to produce and host my first three day live conference. So that was last October called Dream Big. So all of this, like literally from making a decision halfway through 2017, I was like, I've got to shift some things up. So I was committed to following through with what I had that year. And I was already behind the scenes planning on what was going to happen in 2018. So here's what happened. I freaked out a little bit once I made this decision because I was like, what if it doesn't work? You know, here I have a stable, you know, revenue stream coming into my company. Most co coaches would only dream of having even a six figure or multiple six figure coaching business. And why would I like close that out to take a chance on doing something totally different in the structure of my company? But I also knew deep down inside that I was committed to being authentic to myself. So I went with it, launched my retreats, launched my powerhouse mastermind. And while there were a couple of months that felt really scary, I just played full out. And I'm happy to say that over the course of 10 months, I went from cre like creating a whole new structure and creating a whole new revenue plan. And we created, my team and I created seven figures in 10 months. And I truly believe that that was be a result of being truly authentic to myself and being committed to the vision that I created for 2018. And now we get to build upon that and I'm having more fun in my company than I've ever had. I have grown my, my team. Let's see, at the beginning of 2017, I believe, no, sorry, the very beginning of 2018, we had 
one, two, three, four people on my team and now we have 12, right? So we have expanded and I have a team for where I'm going, not where I am now, so I'm future pacing. So I just wanna share this, not to impress you, but to really inspire you that if you're someone who either wants to continue or to start having live events because you see the power of live event and you know that that can also not only make a bigger impact for people, which is our, our number one, right? The fulfillment and the reward of making a difference for people. But second to that, really creating great revenue in your company because there's just something magical that happens when you come together in person, then I'm super pumped up to give you some of the steps that I find so essential when it comes to events and retreats and workshops. And um, I'm, so, I'm, just, I'm so committed to helping you get things up and running or taking things to the next level. So let me back up for a moment. It's not that I had never done live events before. I did retreats back in 2013, different types of retreats with one of my dear friends. Um, they were magical in the experience of them. However, we didn't have proof of concept, which I'll get into that in a moment. Um, we didn't have any kind of following and um, we didn't have a clear message for the retreats themselves. I mean, they were transformational retreats. They, they had a message, but the message was quite, quite broad because she's more, uh, she's an expert in wellness and weight loss and fitness. And I'm of course on the business side of things. So we were trying to like merge the two together and it was very challenging to fill the retreats. Now I'm a hustler, so I can get out there with the best of them. I have a background, you know, I worked in the media for like 15 years. Um, so I was networking like crazy to fill these spots. And then we also didn't price it accordingly. So, um, so even though it was still somewhere be between 1500 to 2000 per person, all of the hard costs that added up with our health chef and the venue and all the food and everything and all the time we put into it, she and I only end up making probably a few hundred dollars from each retreat. And if you think about all the hours, I mean, it was not, it wasn't congruent with what we provided. So I just share this because, um, you know, there's a time and place to decide to do events and I'll get to, into that in a moment as well. And uh, I learned so much over the years in growing my coaching company and really being focused on a clear message, a clear offering, knowing how to connect, knowing how to deliver and fulfill. And so, um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll dive into that in a moment. Okay, so I am just seeing some of your posts here. Um, okay, so I see some of you who are watching live right now that you're wanting to do uh, retreats on a cruise. That's really cool, Wealth Retreat. Uh, VIP day for photo shoot styling, fashion gala events, very cool. Um, yes, okay, awesome. Okay, so, so here's what I wanna dive into today. And uh, it's really about what are the top three steps to take to produce six figure and more events, like six or multiple six figure events. Because once I got really clear on hosting these events um, or having events that were part of a bigger package, that's when like I really did the deeper inner work to get clear on what was the, what was the event going to be for, like what's the purpose behind it. Um, I really believe that when I'm, I, I think of it as like a blank canvas when you create an event, you know, you get to like really just get the paints, paint brushes out and create something that is so beautiful so that I was enrolled first. Like if you're not enrolled first in what you're up to, then I invite you to just take a moment and say, okay, what is it that I'm creating that I can get really fired up about? Because if you're not fired up and clear about what it is, then it's going to become very difficult for you to not only enroll clients to be a part of it, but to even enroll a team, a group, you know, a group of people that are in alignment with your vision. So let me break it down for you. Okay. So the top three steps are n number one. Number one is to decide and commit to the event itself. Just decide and commit to it. Um, I, I say this step because I know that if there are any of you that are like me, sometimes there'll be a great idea of an event. It's like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this, but I haven't fully decided and committed. And you haven't fully decided if you haven't committed and taken, take, taken action, right? So once you take action, it's happening. Right? So, so number one, decide and commit. Now, one thing that I wanted to share is that um, when I was at my retreats this past week, I had my event producer, her name's Shay Wheat. She is fantastic. Um, I got to work with her last year for my dream big event. She is now my event producer for all events. Um, we had a conversation because of course, by nature, because I, I have successfully launched and hosted and produced these high level retreats, there's a group of my clients that also want to do the same. Now, from the outside, it's always like, wow, she's booking these beautiful mansions and she's creating these experiences. I want to do that, right? 
And I'm so glad that Shay shared something with me that um, I hadn't really thought of before that I want to pay it forward to you, which is that when is she, like we were talking about, when is the best time to host your first retreat or a big live event? And she said, don't do it until you have proof of concept, proof of concept, meaning if you haven't already been successful in business in marketing and in sales, then she, she recommends focusing on that first to get your cash flow to a stable place before you commit to a retreat or an event that's going to have a lot of hard costs up front. Like you need to have cash flow for those hard costs. And also you're going to have a much stronger uh, result, a better result at your retreat or your live event if you've already had proof of concept. So I didn't really think about this before because I, you know, I, it's been a while since I first launched retreats back in 2013 that were not totally successful. Like they were successful in that they were magical, but they were not successful and sustainable as a part of a business plan, if that makes sense. So when, so the, the thing that I would say is before, before you even decide and commit, just take a moment and say, do I have proof of concept? And again, I'm crediting Shay Wheat for this event producer. Do I have proof of concept? If not, what she recommends, and I'm in alignment with this, is to, like for those of you who are coaches and service-based entrepreneurs, is to really get your marketing and sales dialed in so that you have a good you know, 10,000 coming in consistently over the course of six to 12 months. You know, Because until you have that, you could easily decide, well, I'm gonna do a retreat anyway, and book a venue and have all these hard costs, some of which you think about, some of which you don't think about, and suddenly you're all, you have all this money in and then you haven't even gotten your messaging and your offers dialed in. So then now you have this venue and you've maybe contracted some team members and decided to pay for all these hard costs and you have no clients and then you're in the hole, right? <laughs> Nobody wants that. So I'm totally in alignment with her that get that proof of concept and if you don't have that and if you don't know what to do, then hire a coach. Like really like work with a coach in a, co a coaching program I'm not saying this for my own benefit, like whether it's myself or someone else, I'm not attached to that, but don't go at it alone. You know, like just, there's so many people, myself included, that initially for the first couple of years, go at it alone, you know, do all the free stuff or, or buy these little tiny packages thinking that's going to be the answer, but it wasn't until I invested in a high ticket training in order to get to where I wanted to go, okay? So that's step number one, decide and commit, and I know there was some prerequisite stuff there that I wanted to throw in. Okay, the second step is to have a clear message about your event, right? You know me, I'm all about messaging. And if you don't have a clear message, then people will not know why they should even invest in your event. They, they just will be like, well, why would I even go to that? I have a full life. Think about where you are in your, your world. Like you probably have a lot on your plate, a lot that you're up to. So when an invitation or an opportunity shows up, whether it's a retreat, an event, a conference, it has to be so compelling for you to to put like take yourself out of your normal day-to-day -day life to invest in airfare and ground transportation and the event itself, you know, maybe if you've got children, you know, having them taken care of, there's a lot of things that go into it. So, you've got to have a strong message. So, meaning, what is your big promise for your event? So, for example, for my powerhouse retreats, which um, I do have another one coming up in April. I'm super pumped up about that. Um, when I think about my powerhouse retreats, even over the last year and a half, my messaging has gotten clearer for my retreats. And ideally, your messaging is congruent throughout all your offerings. So for me, Powerhouse Retreats is all about your messaging. Right? My message is about messaging. So what I've noticed is that there's so many entrepreneurs who really want so badly to make a bigger difference in the world, and they want to attract more clients and make more money. So what I've seen is that there's all these entrepreneurs that will do all these strategies to drive traffic to them, right? They're all about, I need more clients, I need more clients, I need more clients. So they will take steps or even invest in things to get in front of more people. And then once they're in front of these lovely souls, they don't know what to say or what they say is not landing. And so after all this work to build an audience or to speak in front of a, a live group, you know, at a speaking engagement or... Um, maybe they're networking, you know, just old school, good old fashioned networking. So they're getting in front of people, but then they don't know what to say. So I'm not saying that those strategies are not effective. They are, but only if, if and only if your message is clear. That's why I believe in the power of clear messaging. So it's the same thing when you host a retreat or a live event. 
And, um, and so what I've noticed is that when, when I was listening to all these entrepreneurs over the course of the last handful of years, I hear them say all the time, I'm struggling with, you know, attracting clients. I'm struggling with my cash flow. I'm struggling with building a team because I don't have the cash flow to even grow and scale my team, even if they're further along in their business. And so I always look for what's missing and what's missing is a clear and compelling message. What's missing is the power of deep connection, knowing how to deeply connect with their ideal clients. And so that's why I designed this retreat so that we could do a deep dive over the course of three days to go deep on your messaging, get really clear on how you can, uh, how you can really deeply connect with your ideal clients through what I call conversational messaging and not coming across as marketing E or sales E and also knowing how to have an effective sales enrollment conversation. Those in my audience, uh, in my, in my community know that I call it a make a difference conversation and then having a plan in place to achieve your goals. So that's what my retreats are all about. And what I've noticed is that when people are able to know what they're going to walk away with, they're much more likely to say yes, if they're, if that's the piece that they're needing. So as you're thinking about whatever type of event you would like to produce this year or within the next 24 months, think about like, what is the, what is the thing that you want them to walk away with? What is the problem that you're solving? And who is your ideal client that you're solving it for? Right? So these are some of the questions. So if you're taking notes right now, um, you can just write these down. Like who, you know, what is the problem that you're solving? What's missing for them? What is their biggest pain point? And what's my clear message of my event? So once, once you're clear, it is so much easier to even just talk about it. Like even if you're not in, on a, uh, make, I have this hair situation. You know, when you're looking at yourself in Facebook live, it's distracting. <laughs> so what is your clear message? And, and, and be able to, like ideally you're able to talk about it to anyone at any time, just conversationally, even if you're not trying to enroll them. And what I've found is that when I'm super fired up about what I'm offering, then I'll share it with people, even when I'm not trying to enroll them. And they will literally interrupt me and say, Amy, I'm in. I'm like, wait, what? I wasn't even trying to enroll you, but I'm so clear with my message. I'm clear with who it's for. I'm clear about what it is that I'm delivering. And so when they hear it, they're like, that's me. They step in. So imagine if you had your messaging so dialed in that even when you're just having conversations on a daily basis, people are interested and in stepping in. Like that's, that's the dream, right? And not only that, when your messaging is so strong, then you can even have a ripple effect where you're not the only one amplifying your message. Every life you touch is helping to amplify your message so that you can create infinite leads. So there's not a day that goes by where someone doesn't reach out to me for something, you know, like whether it's a current client, someone who's interested in working with me, someone who's interested in interviewing me on a podcast or an online show. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I, I it's hard to keep up. Like I, I have team members now to keep up with all of those requests. And I'm sharing this with you because I never have the issue anymore. And I haven't for years of attracting my ideal clients, right? So, but here's the thing it's because my messaging is dialed in and I make some noise. Like I put myself out there. Okay. So number one, decide and commit. Number two, be clear on your message of what your event is about. So people know what your big promise is. And then number three, create a high ticket experience. So uh, meaning a highly valuable experience. So let me, let me break that down for you. Okay. So you can look at your event or your retreat as the revenue generator for you. Like, of course you're going to focus on making a difference. So I'm not even concerned about that. As far as revenue goes, you can create a highly valuable experience at a high ticket package. So my retreats are not cheap. And there's a reason for that. There's, there's multiple reasons for that. One is that, well, we have a lot more hard costs than we've ever had. And I bring my team so that my team is literally supporting this intimate group of people. So they're getting a ton of value. They get a lot of access to me. I'm so committed to helping them to have breakthroughs in their messaging and their business. So we create a highly valuable experience and therefore I have no problem charging a high ticket amount. And I know from my colleagues who are in the multiple seven and eight figure realm, they have said to me, you know, you can charge quadruple what you charge right now and there will be people who invest in it, you know? So I know the value of my retreats and I also know what problem they solve. So when you think about what you're offering, think about what is the experience that I'm creating? Is it, a, is, it a, uh, is it an intimate experience that has a lot of value to it that I can charge a high ticket amount? High ticket meaning 
Um, in this case, I would say 5,000 and above. Um, now, if you're doing VIP days, I would say at least 2,000 and above, you know, for if you're doing a one day experience. Um, the other way to look at it is you can have a highly valuable experience like my dream big event and charge a steal of a deal of a ticket. So our, our, um, our baseline tickets were $197. And, um, and so in that case, it was a low barrier offer. However, I was creating a high level experience and at the event for those who wanted to go further with me, I made the invitation to step into my powerhouse mastermind, which is a high ticket offer. Does that make sense? So the reason why I bring this up and I know I can just sense right now, there's someone who's like, yeah, but Amy, I just don't think that my ideal clients will pay that amount, right? Like that's a very natural thought to have. So I used to have that thought too of like, who's going to actually invest this amount. So when I was having those thoughts, then I was already not valuing myself, not valuing my services and my packages. And also I was not empowering others to make decisions. I was already all enrolled in my limiting belief of not valuing myself, my services, and not believing that others will invest in it. So here's the thing, you are who you attract, right? So I personally believe in high ticket offerings as someone who's a client of them and someone who offers them. And here's why. I know that if I'm highly invested in something, then I will pay attention, right? There's that saying of like, people who don't pay, don't pay attention, right? So if you pay, you pay attention. If you're highly invested, not only are you highly invested financially, but you're highly invested in your energy, in your presence, in showing up fully. And so I really believe in high ticket experiences and high ticket offerings. And I also believe in delivering on that and over delivering, okay? Now also think of it this way, even as a, as a consumer, say that you're just, you've decided that, you know what? I really wanted to get into the best shape of my life, right? Now you can either join a, a gym at a low ticket offer. So maybe it's 40 bucks a month or something like that. And unless you're highly motivated and have that like willpower on your own, then my experience of myself and others is that if I'm only paying a little bit of an amount and I maybe for the first couple weeks, I'm gung ho and I'm going and then, and then something comes up and I get busy and it's like, Oh, it's no big deal. It's, I'm not really losing much. It's 40 bucks. And then over time that $40 becomes a donation to the gym. Have you ever experienced that? Right? Alternatively, if I'm invested in a personal trainer or a health coach, you know, they're, like there are, there are health and wellness coaches that if you work with them privately at a high level, they, they charge, I know personally, know one of my dear friends charges 1400 a month to work with her privately. Now, if you're investing a thousand or 1400 a month, or even a few hundred dollars per month versus $40 a month, how are you going to show up differently than if you're just spending a, a low amount in the gym? You know what I mean? So I just love the psychology behind when people are really invested, they invest, right? When people are really invested, they invest. So when I'm really invested in something, I invest at a high level, even when I don't know how I'm going to pay for it, I'm so committed that I will find a way to make it happen. Right. And I love attracting people who are also like that. So I just invite you to think about if you are creating an event, create a highly valuable event and either have the experience itself, whether it's a one day VIP experience, a two or three day retreat, or even a, um, a big conference, create a highly valuable event and either charge a high ticket if it's a more intimate experience, or just know that if you're going to charge a lower amount at a big conference, for example, then they don't get as much access to you that personalized attention and that's okay. And then you can make an offer at the big event into a high ticket experience. Now I could also sense that there's somebody just like, yeah, but I feel really bad. Like if I only offer high ticket offerings, then what about the people that can't afford it? Right? That's another question I've had and I've heard it many times. So my, my community knows that I believe deeply in the spirit of generosity. So if you're connecting with people that just aren't there, just really aren't in dire place in their life, but they really want to break through and they're just not there to invest in your high ticket packages, then tell them to study your work. Meaning be the entrepreneur that is so generous that you offer free trainings consistently through Facebook lives, through zoom calls, whatever platform works for you. Maybe it's an in-person workshop that you do for free and, um, and just give them your best stuff, give them your best stuff. And so, so then the other question that I know arises is like, okay, well, 
if you offer all your best stuff for free and then you charge, you know, thousands, if not tens of thousands for your high ticket packages, then why would anyone ever invest in the high ticket package? It's a fair question, right? So the, the difference, so people ask like, well, what's the, first they ask, what's the difference between the content here and the content here? And the answer that I, I learned and I pay it forward is nothing. The content is the same. Like what you hear here, my clients hear all the time. So one would ask, well, why would somebody pay if they can get it for free? And the answer is access, right? My clients get a lot more access to me and my team and these in-person experiences. So the value is higher. Okay. So that way you're not, it's not like you're holding your best stuff from them. You're actually giving it away for free. And there are people who can take notes from my free trainings and they can have results. Now, of course, in my mastermind, my, my, at my retreats and my mastermind community, they have much more access and I see breakthroughs like that. You know, there are people who stepped in at the beginning of January. Um, I am so happy and honored to say that there are so many people in my community now that are newer in business and they're popping like they're, uh, one of our clients just had her first enrollment of a high ticket package and it was a $10,000 package and you know, there's down payment of 5,000 and she's getting another payment of 5,000. So it's basically a pay in full early on in the year. So that's getting cash flow going. Um, I've had another uh, client who's had two VIP clients step in at the $20,000 level to work with her privately. Um, there was one other client who um, was noticing that there were all these other people in our community that were having these results and she started to get into a comparison mode. And she said, you know, I went from being in a comparison mode to deciding to do something about it and follow the coaching. And she did some engagement online and she talked to this gentleman who she had met at an event prior to and was following her. And then she enrolled her first six month client that's paying $997 as a $997 a month for six months. So these are the types of results that are happening when they are highly enrolled in what they're offering, when they're clear with their messaging, they know how to deeply connect and they know how to make an offer. Like this is all happening in a short amount of time. So I just share this because if you're someone who's, whether you're newer in business and wanting to have those types of breakthroughs, or if you're further along and you know that you've hit a plateau and you're just like, ah, there's just something missing, then I just invite you to think, think differently, right? Take a step back, look at the big picture, determine what's working and what's not working. And if there's things that are not working, let them go and let someone like me coach you and help you with the steps, you know? 